This video is brought to you by Squarespace, where you can build your own little home on the internet, all on one platform. Hey babes, it's another What I Eat in a Week, and today we are starting with, I think, dinner? Yeah, this is dinner. I'm making um, a shrimp fried rice, but these vegan shrimp that I discovered recently only came in the coconut flavor. So as the name implies, they're covered in shredded coconut. That's not gonna work for this dish we're making today though. So what I did was is I defrosted them, let them come to room temperature so that I can just rinse it right off, which is scarily convincing. I think these are made out of konjac, which already naturally has this springy texture. As always, you should keep the processed foods down to a minimum. And lately I've been cutting them out altogether, but these I had to try because my fiance loves seafood. Yeah, he's completely sold. I'll link them down below if anybody's interested. Don't worry, this is not sponsored, but I figured I'd share it because I'm sure there has got to be some of y'all out there who miss seafood. You want to make sure that you use day old rice so that you really get that separation in your ingredients and it doesn't get all mushy. And at this point, I pretty much have a smoothie every morning for breakfast. I don't necessarily need to cool off first thing in the morning, but these are the most refreshing and the most filling for me, honestly. I have at least four cups. So yes, this is a meal. And a few of you have mentioned the order in which I put things in my blender, which I wanted to address really quickly. So here I'm showing you how you should be making your smoothie at home if you don't have a high speed blender. You want to put your liquid in first so that it's closest to the blade. Your fresh fruit or anything that is the softest, then like your leafy greens if you're using them, then your frozen fruits. It doesn't matter if I do that or not because I could blend my smoothies with no liquid. Another recipe I'm sure you guys have seen me make, or did you see me make it? I'm not sure if I showed like the full on process, but it's literally the same as my almond milk. I'll link that video for any of you who haven't seen it, but the process is that you do want to soak your nuts um, beforehand, which is the ideal situation. If you can't, you can, or if you don't want to, I don't blame you. At least I do this overnight, but minimum of about eight hours would be good. Moving on, I am preparing all of my vegetables for quite a few dishes. I don't know who I thought I was this day, but I decided that I needed a spread. I wanted a whole layout because that is just how this cuisine is designed to be eaten. And some of you probably already know what I'm talking about because I showed a sneak peek of this on my Instagram. If you're not following me, what are you waiting for? If you can't wait for these videos to come out every week, then you should definitely be there. So yes, I am making Ethiopian food because I told y'all I am claiming it. And since I am no expert at this, obviously, the video that I'm using as a guide. I'll link those down below it's because I am just following whatever they say.
I just have to quickly jump in though and say that one thing that you will notice is that I have altered one or two things like for instance um, the Monsieur Wet. Normally you would really cook that down and use quite a bit of oil actually to fry the tomatoes which will make them much deeper in color like a really rich burgundy but I didn't do that. Why? Because one I was hungry y'all know but also number two I'm watching my fat and already if you haven't seen it you will in the tofu tibs i used quite a bit of butter like i wanted to really crisp up to get some color on it so i, I went in so i was lenient in that one area but still i wanted to watch it so it wasn't in every single portion because i know what i'm capable of so i wasn't putting it past me that i might just quite possibly eat all of this in one sitting no i didn't but i came damn near close
and I thoroughly enjoyed this, especially the lentils. When I say this is definitely the food of my people, like the spice, the jalapenos, the onions, it's all me, it's all me. The only thing I was missing was the injera. I'm still on the hunt for some, but if I can't find it, there is some teff flour in my cupboard. You never know, maybe in the next episode, I'll just make some. So after your pistachios are soaked, you definitely want to drain off that water and then you want to rinse them because yeah, I know you saw that cloudy stuff we started with. So we want to discard that and then add it to our blender with some fresh water. And blend this on the highest setting for about a minute. I don't know what you're thinking. Am I going to find these recipes on the blog? Has it relaunched yet? See, what happened was, listen, we're going on like episode 30. I have a lot of videos to go through, potential recipes to recreate. Because let's be honest, a lot of that footage was so orange. Like at first, I just didn't see it. And then I realized, you know, you really should put your camera on tungsten. I want to give you something prettier to look at, preferably with daylight. So that's what's taking me so long. But thankfully, all of the tools and templates on Squarespace make my life just that much easier. So if you're also in the market for your own little space on the internet, maybe you got something to say. Maybe you have a portfolio. Maybe you want to sell stuff or all of the above. All you got to do is go to squarespace.com backslash A between E and get 10% off after you do your free trial. Of course, ain't nothing better than not coming out of pocket, but getting to reap all of the benefits before you become a paying customer. And then you can use a nut milk bag or even cheesecloth. I do recommend that you use something tall like this. Really want to make sure that you pull it down about halfway. Because as you can see, when you start to pour the liquid through, it is going to drag it down a little bit. So if you barely put that over the edge of your cup, it's going to fall in and you're really going to be mad. and I'm sure you know the rest. Work all of the liquid out of the bag as much as you can so the pulp that you're left with is as dry as possible. And this you don't have to discard because what you have here is now pistachio flour. So if you have a dehydrator, perfect. Or you can just put it in the oven at the lowest setting and leave it until it's fully dry. You want there to be no moisture in it whatsoever. I'm planning to make this in an upcoming video so that you can see the process and then make a recipe out of it, which I think would qualify as a scraps video. So if you guys want another one of those, let me know down below if you haven't seen my scraps videos before. Basically, I've shared videos with like what to do with all of the leftovers that you would otherwise throw away. So already I've covered like veggie stock. I've showed you how to make granola out of this nut pulp and tons of other recipes.
and in previous episodes this is exactly how i used my pistachios as well because if you like a really sweet matcha you are going to love this in my mind it tastes exactly like cereal milk so i've coined this as the frosted flake matcha latte because that's exactly what it tastes like to me Again, given that I really sweeten mine up with agave, I don't have it like that all the time, but with the pistachio, I just think that it tastes better sweeter. And I've also showed you guys this process as well. When I first started drinking iced matcha lattes, this is how I like basically slowed myself down because literally I would drink them so quickly. So now I have to wait for my ice cubes to melt in order for me to get the perfect blend. It helps me pace myself. And this morning for breakfast, we're trying something very different for me because while I have paired herbs with fruit before, I've never done this combination. These were the sweetest cherries that I had all season. So I decided to turn them into a compote of all the herbs I could have picked. Normally I wouldn't go for this one, but I said, why not? So this was me attempting to use that up because you know how it is when you get fresh herbs. If you're not making really large batches of food, you don't know what to do with the rest. I only put like two sprigs in the tips and I had about 27 left. And again, another recipe I've definitely shared with you guys before. This is me making croutons for a Caesar salad, but this time we're gonna go for a chicken Caesar salad. So if you ever have any stale bread or you're just left with the remnants of the end of your loaf and you're not really sure what to do with them, make croutons. The last time I showed you this in the video, I kept calling them breadcrumbs. I have no idea why. Like clearly I was having a stroke because I didn't even catch it until after I posted it. Not once did I catch on while I was actually doing the voiceover or even editing it and listening to myself say it. And do you guys remember the little nuggets that I made out of the frozen tofu that I pressed? This is one instance where those would be perfect. However, um, I, I might have lost them in the refrigerator and then forgot that they were there. So yeah, they went bad. So this is me crumbling up fresh tofu. So that is the reason for the texture difference. But just keep in mind, you know, those were my intentions to use that. Although that's not this, this could be that. And again, in the um, original video that I shared this, I also showed you guys how to make, uh, you know, the vegan Parmesan. Feel free to also throw that into this. That recipe is super simple. Again, I'll link it down below.
and last but not least i have been when i tell you obsessed in fact i posted these recently on instagram y'all these dapple dandy plouts are so good and since y'all know i've been feeling the peaches lately y'all recommended that i try um some nectarines after i you know voiced my concern about the fuzziness of my peaches in the last episode these were good as well and they paired perf when i say perfectly perfectly with the plums and i also threw some dragon fruit in as well because i felt like those two fruits could really carry it because this is a pink dragon fruit it's not the sweetest variety but if you can get your hands on the yellow oh my god <laughs> And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up because it lets me know what you want to see more of. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.